Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at ZBrush 2021.5, the brand new release from the folks at Pixelogic, and this actually comes with a couple of cool features. So we've talked about the whole features that were supposed to be coming with this, and it's very interesting to see that ZBrush 2021.5 is now here. So without further ado, we're going to dive directly into ZBrush and take a look at some of the cool features that are now available. So one of the most talked about feature, which is now here in ZBrush, is the tick skin. Now the tick skin is a way or it's a much more intuitive way of adding details and also playing with something that looks more like the way you work with morph targets. So for those who don't know, when you're working with morph targets directly here in ZBrush, you can easily use this to add details in a much more non-destructive form. So if we simply go all the way here and go to the morph target, we can click on store morph target and we can have that morph target stored. Now once we store morph targets, we can go in and add a couple of details. So let's just add things like so. So once we add this detail, we can easily use the morph to either you know have some extreme detail or we can simply soften these details out now at any point in time we are working with this we can click on the switch button to switch this to the default morph target that we had now how you could work with this earlier was quite simple so if you go over to your brush section you can now simply navigate to where you have your morph target so let's actually get the morph target brush to so press M on your keyboard and switch to morph now at this point let's reduce the brush size we can now use this to bring Bring back those details and this is pretty good for hard surfaces and also if you like to just simply add very little details while you're working you can see that we're just simply bringing back the details now one very cool thing with the morph target at this point is that it doesn't go past the level that you've actually made so it's not like you're making an extra geometry on top like right here where we don't have anything you don't get to see anything like that it simply stores the mesh or simply stores the volume just exactly within the height now this is actually something that the thick skin is doing perfectly fine so let's delete that and simply take a look at the thick skin so with the thick skin here there are some very lovely improvements that we can work with so let's get this and switch this to our you know a clay builder so if you turn on the thick skin right now you would notice that it has a setting height so if i set this height to about 10 for example what would happen is once i am working in zbrush i will not exceed that plateau of 10. so it doesn't matter how much i try to sculpt i would not exceed that plateau so let's actually go in there and rotate this so you can see it's not going way more than that another thing here is that this isn't adding any extra thing to your model so in terms of adding extra geometry it is just simply really distributing the exact volumes that you have and it's not making any new one so depending on what you would like to do you can use this to start making some pretty cool stuff now if you would also want to invert this if you hold down your alt key or if you click on z sub you can also invert so it's exactly the very same depth so this controls the depth or the height of how much stuff that you want and you can use this for a whole lot of cases in terms of detailing or in terms of moving volumes around this is definitely going to come in very very handy now while we're looking at this there are also some very cool brushes that are now available here if so if we go over to the brush panel and go all the way down you would notice that we have a brush now called thick skin clay so with the thick skin clay you can use this to add extra details on your model how does this work this can be used with any alpha you can also use this with any stroke and if you have your thick skin turned on you can also choose to use this now something else we need to talk about before we proceed with that is once you push this all the way up you can see that we have this bunny looking all bloated but that is not about the bunny it's just the height that we're working with and once we let go it simply means that once we start making this or start playing with this it can simply blow up all up until that particular plateau or that particular height that we've made so let's undo this a bit and now with the thick skin brush we can now go in and start doing some very cool stuff so let's switch over to the you know switch over to the display pen and use that so you can now see now we can now use this to get some sort of art looking feeling for our model so if you also switch this to any of the alphas that you want you can use this and you can see that this is definitely going to come in extremely handy for those who would like to do some sort of clay like sculpting and you want to have that sort of representation that feels very natural this is something that you could easily you know work with now there is also some other cool updates with this which also makes a lot of sense and this also works in terms of you know the modifiers that we now have so there is one brand new deformer that is now available so for those who like to have more details or you know you like to get some extra enhancements when you're sculpting this deformer is going to come in extremely handy now this deformer is known as the contrast deformer so how do you get this
this. For you to be able to work with this, you need to go over to where you have your deformation, scroll all the way to this point, and then you can punch the contrast. So once you start punching the contrast, you can see that we're having some more details happening there. So let's also do that. And you can now see that we're having some way more details. And you can also choose to invert this to simply smooth this thing out. So you can get some very high enhanced details, or you can simply smooth this. Now, the beautiful thing with this is it simply happens across the entire geometry. So let's go all the way and you can see even at a part like this, we're having that happening. But if you want some parts not to be affected by it, you can simply go in there and mask. So let's go through and change the mask to something like this. And we'd like to preserve that point and let's get that masking happening. Okay. So at this point, once we increase the contrast, you can see that the contrast simply applies only to the parts that there are no mask. So this one is a, a very cool update and I really love the fact that you can simply use this now and save yourself a lot of time while trying to work with these particular things. So with this here, let's also take a look at something else that makes sense. So the last time where we talked about ZBrush, I explained to you guys that there are basically two types of smoothing brushes that exist. But it's very cool to see that right now, that second smooth brush, which I simply showed you guys a hack on how to work with, is now available. So how do you get this happening if you press v on your keyboard and you go over to where you have smooth this is the basic smooth that you have and you also have these other smooth that came in gradually but right now there is a brand new smooth old brush that is now available in zbrush so by default once you click on the smooth brush so let's use this for example so once you click on the smooth brush and increase the size so let's increase that size and start smoothing let's actually turn off our thick skin so let's turn that off and let's hold down s on the keyboard and we start smoothing you would not notice that it sort of deforms or it just simply smooth the hell out of this and some way somehow we're losing detail and this isn't what you probably want so how do you get things happening so how you can get things going is if you simply click on the brush icon right here and switch back to smooth all and click on ok if you hold down shift on your keyboard it automatically changes to smooth all contrary to default smooth so this is going to smooth your model but at the same time still preserve the shape and also the form of your model so for those who would like to work with this and maybe you're wondering how can you work with this if there's ever going to be a brush for that yes those days of playing with your intensity and you know playing with your focal shift trying to get that smooth brush thing going on or switching from alt those days are over so you can now simply hold down shift with the smooth alt and you can get some very cool results out of this so something else which is also a very good improvement is a brand new ambient occlusion so for those who would like to work with the ambient occlusion right now you don't necessarily need to render for you to preview your ambient occlusion in real time within your viewport all you need to do is go over to your render section go over to this section where you have preview AO and turn on occlusion now once you turn on occlusion you can use the intensity to intensify how much of occlusion you want play with the occlusion quality and if you like to blow some parts you can also use this to do that now while we're looking at things that you can do with this this will make a lot of sense especially for presentation if you like to use you know the default zbrush to showcase your artwork if you like to use the default zbrush canvas to showcase your artwork this is also going to come in extremely extremely handy and other things that are now coming in extremely handy is the fact that the sculptures pro now simply work with a hidden geometry now of course i would talk about this one but before we do that let's Let's actually talk about one more beautiful stuff so let's talk about the render so by default once you're rendering in zbrush what you get is a typical you know flat out renders like this but right now there is a very cool improvement that has to do with uh, an artistic looking stage spotlight now this is known as a radial overlay and you can now use this when showcasing your art next time so for those who would like to work with this how you can get this started is extremely simple so go over to your sub tool and for this sub tool let's simply scroll all the way down hit the word insert or append i think append is better so hit the word append and let's go ahead and append the simple cube now with this cube right here we can simply move this one right down here bring this down and we can scale this up onto a point like so so let's just consider this as a very small platform where the hair is actually jumping so we can position this one right about a point like so and for this presentation purpose this will definitely look good all right so if you spin this around position this this is the camera position you want right now instead of you know playing with lights going over to other softwares trying to get that radial feel you can now do that by going over to your render going right here where you have your bpr filter and you can turn on a bpr filter and use that so 
how this works press this button so you can get your render happening and by default you have your default render click right over here click on this button so you can dock this on the side and now once you simply click on any of this from f1 all the way to f12 if you turn on any of them you can change the filter type by default you might get a filter type of noise you can change it to any of the provided filter type but for this case we're going to go with the radial overlay now with the radial overlay you can literally see we have that sort of spotlight feel happening there and you can use this to play with the radius of the radial overlay you can also use this to play with the borders you can use the radial overlay and play with how much you would like these things to be and if you like to tighten down you can do that for those who would like to play with the opacity you can use this opacity slider to get some stuff happening within the modifier section you can play with the fall off if you like to get some fall off and if you like to move things from one position to another if you want to play with the radius as well you can use this to get the most out of your you know your rendering now for presentation purposes this is definitely going to come in very handy as you can also change the color of both the back color and also the front color so depending on what you like and depending on your preference of choice this is also something that looks pretty pretty nice so when next you're considering making your renders for presentation directly from zbrush this is also something that you would probably consider doing so the most part this doesn't really need you to start doing any extra simulation or stuff all you need to do is just simply hit the render button go over to where you have your bpr filter and get busy with some of the very cool things that you can now do with the radial overlay filter that now exists with zbrush and with this said let's take a look at some other feature which literally makes a lot of sense so if you've ever sculpted in zbrush several times you would like to work with the sculptrice pro and in most cases you would like to add extra details on several parts of your model right now sculptrice pro now also works with hidden geometry so before now if you would like to work with sculptrice pro you need to turn on sculptrice pro right here and then you need to go in and start making those details right around you know several parts of your model and let's go ahead and turn on our poly wire so you can see this and this only works with models that are all visible but right now there's a very cool update that now exists with zbrush 2021.5 as you can simply go in there and make a part of your model hidden and with that there you, you can zoom right in and also make use of the sculptrice pro so let's turn this down a bit and right now you can now get the most out of sculptrice pro even with hidden geometries now this makes a lot of sense as this is also supported for a whole lot of brushes that exist in zbrush and you can now use this for some very cool detailing and also for some very close-up looking sculpting experience so with all of this said there are also some very cool improvements that are now here for zbrush so for those who would like to work with zbrush and convert their z spheres to other things like ropes or probably you want to work with z spheres and you're thinking how can i use z spheres to create curves and use that curve to populate things around my scene this is a very huge possibility as there is is a couple of updates for that at this point and with that said there's also updates for the z modeler in terms of the polyfill group and also creasing several parts and for those who like to simply lock their rotation you can now pick a single rotation and you can lock your model to that rotation and get that happening there is also these beautiful updates right here which has to do with working with the 3d connection space mouse that you can now use alongside zbrush so this is definitely going to be about it for those who will be looking for how you can work with your strokes you know converting your z spheres into curves how you can do that is as simple as switching over to where you have your stroke click on the curve helper and from here you can simply create curves from your z spheres now once you create these curves you can now use these curves to actually populate things across your entire model so this is you know this is definitely about it i'm very excited about the thick skin and of course i'm also happy to see that we are having some very cool updates that are now available right here in zbrush so for those who would like to play with these things zbrush is available you can simply go over to your website pixelogic.com and simply get either a subscription model or you can get a perpetual license so for those who would want to also for academic or floating licenses you can also get these things right there so this is definitely going to be about it i would like to know what you guys think about these in the comment section a huge shout out to the folks at pixelogic for creating all of these cool tools and also making them available for everyone to use tell me what your thoughts are and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and and until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.